Okay, so I'll, I'll introduce myself while um, John's setting up the slides. So I'm the lead of an RSA Catalyst project called Town Digital Hub. And what I'd like to share with you today is some work we're doing in the city of Birmingham on a new approach to well-being, which it would be interesting to see if there's any synergy with the thinking that's going on here in Bristol, clearly a diverse range of thinking in Bristol. And the, the first slide I'd like to show you is um, some statistics on the total public health spend in England in the last government. So uh, the King's Fund asked whether the government, what the government had achieved in its transformation in public health. And um, this total spend over 2010 to 2015 was 21.4 billion, a sizable figure given the NHS deficit. And the King's Fund concluded that um, the impact on um, health outcomes felt at local government level was not yet obvious. So that's, um, it's a long game, everyone knows that, but that was damning with faint praise, to say the least. Um, especially when, cons when one considers that the problems that are being tackled are well known and well costed. So for example, we know that physical inactivity costs the NHS about 1.6 billion a year. We know that medically unexplained symptoms cost the NHS about 3.1 billion a year. We know that falls on isolated elderly people cost about 1.6 billion a year. And on top of these costs, which are to the NHS, you've got the cost to other services. You've got the cost to the justice services, to police, to community services, to... Thank you. How do you it's click this one? Well, this is just the cursor. Ah, okay. Right, thank you. So we have real costs and we have real known problems. And if we were to suppose just a 5% reduction in just one of these areas, say physical inactivity, then for a population the size of Bristol, we'd see savings of well over half a million a year. So why, after several years of this transformation in public health, are we not seeing any dent on these kind of costs, any improvement in the outcomes at local level? Well, it comes down to this, I believe, that unhealthy people don't lack information. Oh, contentious thing to say in this conference, I know, but for most people who are struggling with health issues on a personal level, they feel flooded by sources of information. What they need is something different. They need what's called PSYCAP. Now, how many people in this room are familiar with the term PSYCAP, out of interest? None. Interesting. Okay. So, PSYCAP is a term used in the discipline of psychology. It emerged about 15, 16 years ago when the um, professionals realized that although the original aims of psychology were to understand what it is that makes a person well, what well-being really is, what it means to be happy and fulfilled. In fact, they spent 100 years trying to work out what it is that makes people ill. And since then, they've developed this notion of PSYCAP, psychological capital, which basically breaks down these four things. Hope. So you've got to understand what issues you've got and what your personal goals are for dealing with them. Self-efficacy. You've got to feel that you can actually achieve the plans you've made to achieve those goals. Optimism. Any setbacks, any problems in your encounter, you've got to feel they're the exception, not the rule. And resilience. You've got to feel you can bounce back from those problems. That's PSYCAP. But that's not all that you need in order to be well. The RSA's own research has shown that the most um, the positively correlated indicator with well-being is a strong sense of connection with the community. And similarly, the most negatively correlated is feeling blocked from taking part in a community. And yet 60% of people in Britain don't feel part of communities. They don't know anyone that can change things locally. PSYCAP and community connection, they're the things that will really make a difference to well-being. So what we're doing in the city of Birmingham is we're building a new kind of well-being solution that is focused on PSYCAP and a connection with the community. So we're working with providers to review the personal issues that people in the community are addressing and the goals they're seeking to achieve. The providers then offer contributions towards meeting those goals. So these providers are local government bodies, NHS bodies, also a large number of community organisations and some private sector organisations. They then collaborate to identify where there's gaps and overlaps and try and build synergy by removing those. Then the public can use a new kind of website to look up their issues, find what goals they are seeking to achieve and then find contributions to match them. If they get setbacks, if they get problems, they can report them via the website and then the providers can fix them. And then it all goes around again. It's an agile, evolutionary, iterative system. Here's 
a picture of it. Effectively, what we're building is what in Birmingham they call a living asset map. So a map of community resources that's owned and maintained by the community itself. Here's um, a screen. This is actually not for Birmingham. We've only just started building that. This is for an imaginary town called Penderton, which shows the sort of issues that people might face. So activity, they might be physically inactive. They want to get fit. Drugs, they might have drugs issues. Homelessness, safety. They might have transport issues. Typically, they'll be about 10 to 12. And then if there's an issue that they're particularly concerned about, they click on that, and then they see underneath that the goals that they might be trying to achieve. So here we have goals for physical inactivity, such as how can my kids stay active? Where can I cycle? Where can I dance? Where can I play sport? The one of them that's opened up here is where can I run? And you can see here that there's a, there's a leisure center offered, there's running maps, there's a running path. And they can see reviews by other members of the community of those resources. If they click on one of the reviews, they then see details of what people are saying about that. So here, for example, clicking on a running path, you can see that um, a couple of people really like it. They've given it four stars. One has only given it three stars because last time they used it, their face was scratched by a bramble. And that provides the feedback loop that then allows the providers of that, so that might be the town council, then go and fix that, or the community can fix it itself. So here you see a time bank, wasteland clearance, which actually allows people in the community to contribute time to fixing that, one, that running path. What we're building here is a new kind of well-being solution. We call it Wellbrum. The initial cost to get off the ground was 10k. We anticipate in the first year it's going to save millions as we extend the scope to other districts of the city, to other issues, a big list of issues here, diet, culture, isolation, education. These relate to those costs that I showed you on that very first slide. It's open data, an open platform. It's maintained by the community itself, and you can get at the data either as a user but by downloading it in spreadsheet format, or you can use web services as a developer to access it and integrate it, and social media is integrated at every level. And the reason this is different to other well-being platforms is because it's not just a source of guidance or a list, a directory of resources. It's a living asset map that builds site capital and maintained by the community itself. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Keith. So it's now just after five. I've just spoken to the, the food uh, providers who say it's going to be at half five that the food arrives. So perhaps if people would like to raise a question that they'd like to address with Keith, but for, for brevity's sake, if we can perhaps just give voice to some of the key questions in the room and start to identify these thematics. I've got, um, I see a question here. So perhaps if I, oh, thank you very much. Hi, that, that, that sound, sounded really interesting. Okay. Okay. Um, that sounds like look really good. I'm just wondering how you are going to be able to um, know uh, how are you evaluating uh, uh, savings and um, the, the well, those, that's how, how are you going to monetize that? Yeah, great question. So um, what we're doing is we're using the platform itself to capture various forms of data. So we can capture all sorts of data via the usage of the platform. We know who's clicking on what. And we know also the ratings and reviews that they're leaving of those resources. And then because we link via the platform to all the providers of health and social care and community care, we can join up through the platform all the data that they collect um, Jen was talking about linked data. That's very much key to what we're trying to do here. We're trying to find a way that um, by this um, framework of issues, goals, contributions, that's how we link things. So we can see then that the healthcare outcomes, we can measure those against the usage, against each issue, against each goal, against each contribution. In the interest of brevity, that's all I'll say, but is that uh, enough? Thank you. That's great, thank you. Is, yes, this is working. Hello, my question is really about the quality of advice. If we take something specific like diet, certain members of our community with conditions can't take the general advice. And what is healthy for some people might be fatal for them. How can you police and control specific information to special needs people that may not be that good at even accepting their own conditions? How can you police the quality of information being safe? 
Well, the um, providers that operate through the digital hub are the same providers you can go to now. We're not creating new providers. Um, we're not taking any away. We're just joining them up, allowing people to find them. So what you might do, for example, is you might um, click on the issue diet. You might go down to, say, how can I lose weight? And then underneath that, you, may, you might see options for aquiliac, for example, or um, options for people that have had um, stomach cancer. There might be different things that you could um, navigate to through the site. Now, what you find there will be the same things you'll find now. It's just that people will be able to find them. It's not, a, um, it's not NHS Direct. So we're not trying to provide an overall guidance website. What we're do, trying to do is allow people to navigate by their own understanding of the personal issues they face, the personal goals they're trying to achieve. And um, effectively, it synthesizes all the sources of advice and guidance that you have now. It doesn't try and replace them with some kind of um, overarching new uh, web page that, that will, will, will tell you things you can't find now.